I'm going to be speaking to Dr. Shaoqi of ID Tech X about a new report the uh, firm has got out about solid state batteries. So welcome to the interview. Hi, everybody. It's my great pleasure to be here. Um, I'm also the well, author of the, 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 the report, so happy to discuss any questions around it. Well, I it's been a couple of years since I interviewed you about solid state batteries. And I understand there's been a fair amount of uh, progress made towards commercializing solid state. But let's for for the folks who ha didn't see our interview a couple of years ago, let's start with the basics. What is a solid state battery, and maybe compare it to the current battery technology? Yeah, sure. I think that it would be good to start from the most mature technology, the lithium ion battery, which is based on liquid organic electrolyte. So solid state battery in general, most of the case, you just replace the liquid electrolyte with a solid electrolyte. Um, and of course, the ideal situation would be uh, all solid state electrolyte, but sometimes the electrolyte could be a gel format or contain some kind of liquid. It's really dependent on the definition. Some people, they may um, consider very strict um, definition, like all solid state battery, but like on the market, many people, they call their products as solid state battery, even some liquid content. This is so simply I understanding. Okay. Uh, and my understanding is that solid state has a number of advantages uh, because it's not a liquid. It's maybe a ceramic or some other solid material in most cases. It's uh, far less likely to, uh, far safer, so less likely to catch on fire. And it also has an energy, higher energy density. And I noticed that your report says that uh, it could get beyond a thousand watt hours per liter and just for comparison's sake, I looked up the energy density of a Tesla Model 3, which is 730. So we're talking about an increase in energy density of about a third? Yeah, so the value propositions of solid-state batteries, of course, people talk about safety, energy density. Those are like a potential benefits of them. But strictly speaking, not all technologies will be able to achieve that. And we really need to see what technologies we are talking about. Um, in general, regarding safety, they tend to provide better safety compared with the liquid-based um, lithium-ion battery, for instance. But sometimes, like if you use with the lithium metal anode and you have to deal with the sulfide electrolyte, and there are also other cases which may have different safety concerns, um, but in general, people would expect a better uh, safety. In terms of energy density, again, it depending on what kind of technologies we are talking about and, and also like what kind of uh, electrodes we need to use in order to pair with the electrolyte. Um, so I would say currently most of the players, they would claim they have a higher energy density expectations, but at the moment, probably that's a, a target people still need to work on. Some of them, they, they're able to achieve that. Well, let's talk about hype versus reality. We've been talking about solid state batteries for years now, and the uh, other experts that I've uh, interviewed about solid state think that it probably won't really hit the mass market until the late 2020s. Uh, where are we at with uh, the reality versus the hype? Yeah, so again, that uh, I just mentioned, there are lots of different definitions about solid state battery. So there are already some of the products, if we are talking about polymer-based solid state battery, so there are products already on the market. And if we consider a little amount of liquid contained in, in the electrolyte, and they are mainly still solid state form, they can still provide better safety. Um, they, are, uh, they are very close to the market. But of course, if we, if we are considering like all solid state battery, there shouldn't be any liquid, then there, of course, there are more challenges we need to deal with than probably like the timeline we're talking about um, make more sense. So again, depending on which technology we are talking about, so they are really at different stages. So if I understand this correctly, where a combination of 
of uh, well, the electrolyte might be uh, partly solid, partly liquid, partly gel, uh, or maybe some gel is in there. And those technologies are already on the market, and they're going to be getting better uh, over you know as time going forward. But the real solid state with the ceramic electrolyte and all of the 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 pure solid state battery, probably not for another four or five years. Um, so it, again, so like because we are consider automotive applications, even the battery itself um, demonstrates some kind of capabilities. Usually, how to apply them to the vehicle and also like get involved in the supply chain, it usually take quite a lot of time. So if we are consider this kind of application, I would say yes, it still take some time and like at least the three, three or four years. Um, for like a, some kind of a scale. But if we consider other kind of applications which wouldn't require such strict uh, um, standards like grids, then probably they can come to the market earlier. Do we have any automotive manufacturer, EV manufacturers that are talking about uh, bringing a solid state battery to the market fairly quickly? Um, there are like lots of uh, OEMs uh, get involved in the game. So they either have like a research team or partners with the solid state battery companies. And some of them, they also like uh, invested and get involved uh, quite a lot. Um, and I think lots of them, they have the plan um, to bring something in like two to five years. Uh, but of course that usually depends on the actual progress. And also, as I mentioned, for automotive applications, so usually there are many things just a big, besides technology maturity. Um, so usually we, we, we should, I, I think we probably would expect that like, a, um, wouldn't happen like next year, um, kind of that. Right. Uh, one of the advantages that I've seen uh, described for solid state is the ability to speed up uh, charging, charge at a much a faster rate. Is that uh, is that the case? Are we expected to see uh, faster charge times with solid state? Yeah. So again, here there are like different technologies we are talking about. Um, but in general, solid state electrolyte. So usually because the interface is solid, solid interface, the internal resistance could be higher. Um, so there could be some challenge in terms of faster charging. But on the other hand, um, there are also companies who demonstrated like a faster charging capability somehow. So I would say it, it's not the case. The solid state battery will definitely give you a better faster charging performance. That, that's not the case. Um, it, but um, for some technologies, players, when after their efforts, they probably would be able to show like a 5C or even higher, so those kind of thing. Um, but but I, in my analysis, I would say like faster charging wouldn't be the most important feature that solid state battery could bring to us. What, uh, from, an, uh, from an automotive uh, manufacturing perspective, what is the most important attribute that solid state batteries bring to the market? Yeah, I think, so of course, the safety is important. Energy density would be important. And of course, cost. So there are also other factors people also value, like the faster charging capability, of course. As, uh, and some of the factors, they can be related to each other. So for instance, if you can do faster charging, the energy density probably could be sacrificed a little bit because you can charge that more often. Um, I just mean like solid state battery, in terms of their value propositions, maybe faster charging is not like the most important, most attractive feature they can right. bring. Even current um, conventional lithium ion battery, like if you want to do faster charging, you can still do it, but they will have a damage to the lifetime somehow. So, um, it's it's a it's not like a very simple question. You can or you cannot. There are many factors people need to consider to make the, a balance the cell in the end. Right. One of one of the the big issues of the past year, and we saw this come to the to the fore publicly with the passage in August of the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act, which uh, 
prioritize the building of battery plants and supply chains in North America. Who are the North American players? Uh, and I and I gather uh, Japan, Korea, and China dominate uh, currently in the battery market. But are we are we going to see solid state uh, industry? Uh, solid state battery manufacturing emerge in North America? Um, so there are quite, actually quite a lot of uh, startups uh, in, in the US. Um, and uh, some of them also announced that their plan to do maybe limited production um, because this is still like early stage if that will be expanded to like mass production, that's a different question. Um, U.S. usually like they have lots of uh, innovations around um, battery technologies, um, and uh, East Asia they are like more famous with like the supply chain, the manufacturing, and uh, their uh, experience with the, like the conventional battery for years. Um, so I would say like in, under current situation, um, there are lots of uh, considerations, discussions around supply chain. People also want their um, they're like uh, supplied to be close to the application market. So I would say like uh, in, in the US, definitely there are lots of efforts around that. What are, uh, we'll just wrap up the interview, uh, Shashi, with uh, what are the manufacturing challenges here? Yeah, so there are actually quite um, several challenges. So first of all, like because you are going to work with the solid state electrolyte, so that means um, the manufacturing of the electrolyte will be different, and and also the procedures will be varied. Um, for for example, initially you probably have the electrolyte filling process. Now that need to be changed to something else. And also, like if you want to get a higher energy density of a battery, um, but you just uh, only change your electrolyte um, and keep the electrodes the same, then you wouldn't get a higher energy density. So that means most of the time, the electrodes also need to be uh, shifted to other materials. So for example, you probably need to shift from graphite to silicon anode or lithium metal. So that means the material you are dealing with will be different, the manufacturing then will be different. So that's not graphite, like lithium metal, you probably need a very thin um, the lithium foil and they need to be high quality. That also means the supply chain will be different. Um, and in addition, depending on the technology, pro probably the manufacturing process will also be different. Like for some of the oxide system, you need a high temperature for the centering. And maybe for sulfide systems, you need a, a inner gas um, condition uh, or like special condition. So like all of them um, means you have to modify your production line. And, and of course you need to improve that in order to get a high yield. Um, so that's basically like lots of challenges with the manufacturing, lots of work people need to do. Well, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate your insights. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, really um, great to have this discussion and uh, hopefully like we can together to watch the progress of a solid state battery. <laughs>